Okay, we're live. And we're being recorded. So Dave, I'll see what we have at six o'clock. And if we only have the one attendee, we'll wait another couple, three minutes. Mm -hmm. Yep, that makes sense. For those folks that are signing in from the public, um, we're gonna give it a few more minutes and see how many other people will sign in, give them a chance before we start. So everybody gets the same opportunity to hear the introductions. So stand by please.
couple more minutes, Dave? Sure, give it, let's give it two more minutes and then let's start. Okay. Dave, I'm going to start. Let's start. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, just want to thank everybody that has joined us uh, for the Region 4 open house on the 2022-23 um, season setting and regulation simplification process. Uh, just to give you an overview of what this is, um, <clears throat> it was a few years back, um, a couple uh, cycles ago that we started an effort to simplify our regulations. Um, the public was uh, always clamoring that our regulations were too complex. And so a couple cycles ago, most of the regions in the state um, tried to clean up some of the regulations uh, through combining um, hunting districts or simplifying the license types that we have. And when we got our new director this year, Hank Warshek, um, he, um, reinitiated that effort and gave all the regions and the biologists and uh, regional staff the uh, directive to go back to what we have and look at the biological um, issues that we have and try to simplify those regulations by combining hunting districts or any other form that we could to make these regulations as simple as possible. Um, we did that. Our biologists looked at those. We combined some hunting districts. We simplified some license types. And tonight we're going to go over those for the region four only components of that. Um, each of our regions are doing the same in open houses. We've had um, two or three of them. I think region five was last night. Region two was a couple nights ago. Um, that's Missoula and Billings. So tonight will be region four. Again, I, I um, thank you for joining us. Um, I'll have Corey Lecker, our uh, wildlife management uh, manager, introduce his staff here in a minute. My name is Gary Bertolotti, um, the regional supervisor for Region 4. And um, a couple things. Um, 
we've this time we've proposed about 40 different changes. So the process going forward are, and these these are ideas that the biologists have. They're not um, certain. We could we could see some of these go all the way through and get approved by the the uh, commission. We could see none of them go through. Um, the decision making process is going to be based off of public input. Um, what we see after we get public input, what the director and um, those folks in Helena look at after we see public input, and then what is proposed for the commission. The commission then can change it all, or they can take and pull forward whatever they feel they want to pull forward based on public comment, based on agency suggestions, and we'll move from there. Again, public comment is the uh, purpose of us putting these ideas out on the street for people to see. Tonight's meeting, open house, is basically to inform you as to what these ideas are. And if you have questions based on those ideas, that's what we wanna hear. Um, so we can make sure you're clear on what the proposal and ideas are. It is not, this is not the forum to provide public comment. Public comment, we will show you where to go to public comment. Public comment will be open until October 20th. Then those public comments will be gathered up, um, put together, and the director will then look at all those, determine if there's changes to be made based on public comment. And then there'll be a additional public comment later. And then the commission will take those proposals and ideas, put them out there for public comment till from December 14th until January 14th. So there's plenty of time for these things to change, to stay the same, depending on what public wants and what we see as best for the um, regulations and for the simplification of those. Um, let's see, region four, we have approximately 40 changes and each biologist will go through those individual changes and as we go through those, if you have questions, you can type them in. We will try to answer those as we're going through them. If um, we don't get to them, we will answer them uh, verbally to you uh, as we see them. So with that, um, Dave, do you wanna yep. give us some logistics on this and anything I missed? Yeah, the way, you know, this is a different format certainly for for FWP for the meetings, um, these type of meetings is to do these in Zoom. And um, we're using the same format as our commission meetings are held, which is a Zoom webinar. And normal Zoom is open and it's, um, it's kind of a wide open, almost free for all. These are set up to be um, initially at least, um, more of a sharing format between the panelists, which are the biologists, and then the, uh, the folks that have logged on to the meeting. So what we'd like though, is this is really, as Gary kind of alluded to this, this really is a chance we're hoping that this will be considered the, uh, one of a couple of different ways that you can actually hear directly from the biologists with their ideas that they have for new regulations, you can hear it directly from them, um, but also you can ask questions for those people to the, to the biologists themselves. And tonight, what we'd like to do to actually get the questions a couple of different ways. Um, and we weren't sure, and we're only the third region to do this so far. So one region had had a pretty strong turnout. One had a, had a um, fairly low turnout. And we look like we're at about only about 10 people right now. So we're sort of towards the low end. We're not the lowest, but we're towards the low end as well, um, at least for now. People may join or leave. Um, but I think what we would like best, the best way to handle questions, at least initially, so that we're sure it's important. We want to get through all the proposals. We have the most proposals compared to some of the other regions. If you look at the bottom of your screen, there is a, um, a question, a Q&A button down there. I'll see if I can share. No, mine doesn't show up. Well, it's down at the, at the very bottom. There should be a Q&A. And if you click on that, you should be able to type in a question. Um, we can see those. And 
either one of us can answer those, or even better, the biologist with those with those specific units and those ideas can uh, can respond back to you. And if we get through things, or if things are going pretty quickly, um, last night I know in in Billings they just switched and started taking verbal questions. It was simpler just to do that. So we'll kind of see how it flows through tonight and what happens, and and that's um, definitely an option too. We really want to make sure though that for the people who are on here, we can we thank you for taking the time to come and do this and to make this valuable for you. If there is anything very specifically that you want to be sure or specific units that you would like to make sure that um, we cover or we have an opportunity to talk about more, you can certainly type that into the, the Q&A section right now as well. Once we start doing the, um, if we can get into some verbal questions, then you can use the raise the hand key and we can mute and unmute people so they can talk and the biologist can just uh, respond directly to you. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you have any questions about how we're running things or if, if you're having problems with something, you can direct those on there and we'll see what we uh, what we get. And I see Scott already posted area 441 and 422. So it looks like that the Q&A function works okay. And um, I think we're, uh, we'll be in fairly good shape, so. Hey Dave, I wanna make one more, one more sure. um, piece of input. One more piece of information. So in the past, the way we've operated uh, our season regulation cycle is we would go out to communities and solicit um, ideas from the public. Um, we would do that. We would do open houses. We would do some scoping and move it um, across the region. Um, and this new process is a little bit different. So I uh, just want everybody to be aware of that. Um, again, this open house gives you the information to um, take, digest, and then make, <clears throat> make comments to the agency. And Dave will uh, show you where you can make comments. The biologist will also be available between now and the 20th. Uh, and their contact information is online also, where if you still have questions, you can contact them directly. So. Um, this there's other ways, Gary. We'll show the. There's another way to do that through the web, uh, to contact the biologist directly, through the through the internet site too, through the web. Right, group. right. So I just a uh, just a um, confirmation that this year is different than what we've done in the past, um, so that if um, you've gone through this process before and are expecting us to have public meetings across the region, that is not going to happen. So this is your opportunity to learn. Um, ask questions and then uh, digest and then make comments as necessary through our website. We encourage you to do it um, through the website. Um, it's easier for the agency to compile those comments and uh, organize them so that the um, director's office and the commission can read them and um, determine what uh, path they need to go for the um, suggestions and ideas that are out there. Gary, why don't you just run into the timeline, where we're at in the timeline and what's going to happen through now and January 14th. That's next on our agenda anyway, so let's just... Right, so I'll just go back through that. I did a little bit of it before. So right now, the public comment period has already opened up. Um, this is an open house to, again, inform people of what's being, uh, what ideas have brought been brought forward um, biologically and a little bit of social aspects were put into that as we made these, put these ideas together. Um, until October 20th, the public comment period is open. After October 20th, uh, all these uh, comments will be gathered up, categorized, um, reviewed by the director's office. The director's office then will either leave them as is, change them accordingly, based on what the public has said, or um, drop them totally, depending on what we hear from the public and what um, they see as necessary for, for moving forward. Then, um, I'm not sure it's gonna be another public comment period, Dave, after that. Are they going back out after the director has uh, assessed those? I believe they were. The tentatives, those become the tentatives then. Once yes. after the, those go to the commission, and then out as tentatives, the commission decides. Yeah, on December 14th, the commission will take 
all those proposals, put them out there for um, review in the public during their meeting, and then they will be tentatives put out to the public for one month. During that one month period, each region will have an, uh, a citizens advisory committee open house, um, and it'll all be on virtual as we know it now. Um, there, they will be soliciting public comment um, via those Zoom video conferencing type meetings, open houses. Um, there will be also on the web uh, the ability to comment on your own. Um, ours will be December 11th, or no, January, January 11th, January 11th, January 11th um, and we will have that advertised out there. And then on January 14th, the commission will they, then make final decisions. That's the timeline. All right, so I guess next on the, um, next on the, and if you have questions on that timeline too, feel free to, to, to send those in as well. Um, Corey was gonna cover, Gary's done some of this, but a little bit about what's happening right now, how this is again, really different from what's happened in the past, uh, especially here in region four. So Corey, wildlife manager, uh, and then you'll do the, um, uh, you can do the staff introductions and I'll talk about the comments. And then we'll start. Sure. Yeah, I think Gary covered it pretty well, um, Dave, that, you know, typically we would have a scoping period sometime in early fall. And then the biologists would develop proposals throughout the fall months. And we'd go to the commission uh, one time with that in December. Um, but this year it's a little bit different where we have this, this open period where folks can see proposals um, and give feedback on those ideas and give their ideas as well. Um, to maybe mesh a new proposal or adjust these proposals that we would take to the director November 1st. And then ultimately they go to the commission where the commission can have their own proposals as well, um, December 14th at their meeting. And then the results of their meeting will then be a, just the normal process, which is every two years um, on these season structures, these big ticket items, um, they would be open for a comment period of one month and then they're their ultimate decision is in the February meeting, um, usually in early February, for the next two years' season structures. Um, so if I can get, like Dave mentioned, I'm Corey Lecker, the Region 4 Wildlife Manager um, for the last couple of years now. And if I could get folks to hop on so they can see your faces, I'll introduce Ryan popped on first. Ryan Rauscher, he's our biologist up in Conrad. Um, Jay Colby's down at White Sulphur Springs. Jake Doggett here is in Great Falls. <clears throat> and then um, Sonia Anderson is in Lewistown. And Brent Lawner is in Fairfield on the South Rocky Mountain front. He, he'll be hopping on in about five minutes. He has another uh, meeting to attend. He's just getting out of that here in the next couple of minutes. So now you have names to faces um, in their areas of responsibility. And that's who you're talking to. So feel free to use them to your advantage while you got them. Yeah, and I guess that's important. There's there's a couple of, we said we would talk about how to comment, uh, the different routes that you can go about to comment. I'm gonna try and open this up, share the screen and quickly run through those if we can get all that to work. Um, so right now we should be looking at Somebody can just give me a thumbs up on the camera. If you can see the season setting and hunting regulation changes, is that what's on for everybody? Looks good, Dave. Okay, so we have that. Um, this is kind of the main, and the way you get to that page, if you go to the main, I'll go right from the start. If you just type in fwp.mt.gov, takes it to our main web page. just slightly down, scroll down, um, you see where it says comment by October 20th. This is the first round of comments. You can click on that. It opens up that page I just showed you. If you roll down on that page, the timeline is there. And again, we've, we've covered that already. We're in the middle of the September 21. We're, we're at the beginning of the timeline right now. A um, Couple of ways to ask questions of the biologists. One of them, you can click on this button and 
We've had a handful of those so far over the past few weeks, but uh, we monitor those. Those go to the individual biologist where the question's asked and they um, responded back uh, directly to the person asking the question. So you can go through the website if you want to ask a question. You can also go through our proposal sheets. Um, there's a sheet in there, it's actually way down at the bottom, but it has the contact information for all of our biologists and it should be popping up right here. So it has the biologists along with the districts that they have proposals for and their contact, whether you wanna contact them by email or give them a phone, uh, phone call, but you can get to them directly that way as well. So it's a good way. I mean, you can you can get some really good again interactions with with the biologists, and those are for questions, for comments, um, and that's what Gary alluded to it first. We're trying to keep tonight mainly to questions because we don't have a way to gather these comments, put them into the record where the director's office and the commission can see them. So the best way to comment is to go online, and if you just again scroll down this main page, it says how to comment. And if you go past the map, keep moving past the statewide map, down to comment online. And if you open up the region four or the region three or any of the other districts that you have an interest in commenting on and you open up uh, one of the draft change, the changes, it'll show up. You can read the changes if you want to, which is we'll go through those tonight. But at the bottom of that list, comes up to the comment. You don't have to leave your contact information if you don't want, but you would select a district, type in whatever comments you have and hit done. And what I would recommend, the, I think the most efficient way to get the most mileage out would be to comment, make each comment individually through here. Make sure you click the, uh, the hunting district button. That way it's sure it goes in, you know, into the packet for that individual district and they'll, they'll be get the full consideration that way. So you can write one long comment, I think, on everything. Um, again, the farther you get down in those comments, the less likely it is it probably winds up in the right place. So I would, I would really focus on trying to do a comment for each individual one that, that you have an interest in. Um, and those, again, you have until October 20th, then those comments will be considered and reworked into tentative regulations. And you'll have another round to comment uh, from mid-December to mid-January. So you'll wanna take advantage of that opportunity there um, once again. So I'm gonna shut off my screen and we should be back. Um, if you have questions again on how to comment um, or questions about commenting, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I think we can start with the, with the proposals. And our plan was to kind of start at the top of that list that you just saw and work our way down. And if you wanna open up in another window on your own computer, um, if you have a hard time seeing these, you can open up those individual proposals and follow along on your own, or Corey's gonna try and share his screen that'll have that, uh, have both the map, because there are times where we wanna show the, um, how the district boundaries may be shifting, or, uh, and he'll have the, um, the documents over on the other side. So Corey, are you, in good shape to go ahead and run through. Yeah, I can try to share my screen, see if it works. Are you ready? All right, good luck. Okay, so um, I'll start with the statewide proposals um, so you folks can understand what the statewide proposals are. And after I go through statewide, region-wide, if you have any questions, type them in or raise your hand and, and uh, Dave can let you in. Okay, so share screen. Now working? Yep, works. So statewide proposals, um, I'm just gonna read basically what same thing you guys can see. Um, director's office is interested in hearing your thoughts on Montana's deer and elk hunting season length, timing and transitions from one season to another, such as the dead week between archery and rifle. Should elk and or deer seasons begin earlier, later, run longer, shorter, or have more time in between archery and rifle seasons is one question. Second question, would two to three weeks of antlerless elk season consistently applied before and or after the general seasons 
for over objective hunting districts be a good replacement for shoulder seasons that often vary in start and stop dates from one area to another. Um, after two to three weeks of antlerless elk hunting, any elk management needs up to February 15th would be addressed primarily through game damage response. So those two proposals there on deer and elk. <clears throat> and if you have any other ideas, feel free to put them in as a comment. Um, next statewide topic is bull elk permit holders. So if you draw a special bull elk permit, such as a mule deer permit. If you draw a mule deer permit right now in Montana, that's the only district you're allowed to hunt a mule deer buck. So that's not the case for bull elk. This proposal states if you draw a limited bull elk permit, should they be restricted to only hunting that district during that season, or should they also be allowed to hunt in other districts where their general license is valid? For example, a hunter holding a limited archery elk permit could only hunt bull elk in that hunting district during the archery season, but would be allowed to hunt bull elk during the general rifle season in another district. So that's an idea. Um, buck, deer, and bull elk permits, should they be limited to first choice only in the drawing? This would mean hunters would only apply for one hunting district for bucks and bull elk permits. Um, lastly, statewide, uh, which is turkeys, and mainly this process is dealing with deer and elk. Um, some regions threw a few other ideas out there as well um, with turkeys or antelope at this time too. But this is a proposal for turkey season. Spring turkey season currently runs from Saturday, second Saturday in April to the third Sunday in May. FWP is proposing a spring turkey season that has established, based, established dates based on set dates. So it'd be the same every year. April 15th to May 31st, rather than rotating on a calendar. So statewide, those are a few ideas. And like I said, if there's other ideas you, you have, feel free to put them out there. Um, we all get to see them as well as the director's office and the commission. So any questions on statewide? And I can't see Dave if they have questions or not. I yeah, I have to switch mine over as well. Okay, so maybe there there may be some after I do region wide. So re, in region four, <clears throat> so these are changes that would affect the whole region. Just a couple of them. Um, we have currently some whitetail B licenses that are valid in groups of hunting districts, and we have three of those. 496, 497, 498, which are tied to two hunting districts each for whitetail deer management so we can focus our deer harvest in those areas. Um, so to address removing some LPTs, making the seasons easier to understand, we're proposing to get rid of those three licenses and actually add another region four B license, real similar to the one we have now, which you could buy one of that's valid in all of region four, except for 455. This would be another one where we, we would offer up, for example, 2000 as a starting point licenses through the drawing. And then any surplus a person could buy up to seven total B licenses you can have in your pocket. So surplus, you could buy extra ones. Then you could go anywhere in the region except 455 and focus that antlerless harvest. And this would mimic what region six and seven already have as a second white tail bee license. So real similar to theirs. Um, elk, and this really is, you'll see later on, there's proposals with the 900 archery bundle. The 900 archery bundle is an elk permit that allows you to archery hunt in 23 hunting districts outside the breaks. Um, many districts and many regions are dissolving out of this bundle. Um, and trying to go a little more consistent within an elk management unit or a hunting district for archery permits. And so some districts were pulling out and going to a general season. Um, some places wanted to be a little more restrictive on their archery hunting. Um, so this basically this proposal is removing the 900 archery, and then you'll see the archery proposals within those districts later on tonight. 
Uh, we do have a turkey proposal that we threw out there at this time. And currently we have two limited entry turkey draw permit areas uh, here in Cascade County. And then one up by Loma on the Marias, Teton and Missouri River, west of Loma, up all the way up to the interstate. So two separate draw areas. We are proposing to uh, eliminate those draw areas and go to a general season, which some of region four already is in a general season. And we also have part of region four that does not have a season, uh, which is Judith Basin and Mark County, which we were looking to have a season. So this would eliminate those draw areas and have a spring gobbler season, archery shotgun but we would have no fall season to allow for turkeys to expand in region four. We actually have a proposal out to the commission right now, which they'll vote on at their next meeting in October to expand turkey populations over the next few winters in region four. Um, we have some places in region four that turkey numbers are down. Some places turkeys are doing really well. So we're asking the commission to allow us to move turkeys in region four to expand populations. So coupled with that, this proposal will, will allow a spring general season, but eliminate the fall rifle season, rifle shotgun archery season to allow turkey expansion. So any questions on region four? With that, I will then head to the map and the biologist proposals. You got anything in there, Dave? Any nope, questions? I think we, we're good on questions. No questions yet. So. Okay, so I think uh, last time we started with Ryan. Ryan, are you up? Unmute yourself, Ryan. There you go. I did. I was looking for the right button. I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, Corey, you want me to go through just 401, 403? Or sure. Yep, I'll just, I'll just do it just like the other night. Yep. Okay, Hunting District 401, 403. This is an elk proposal. Does not affect deer. As you know, the 920 Corey mentioned earlier is going away and District 401 was part of that limited archery draw for the 920. Um, the 920 wasn't actually very limiting for archery hunters. The success rate last year was 85 prior, 85% for residents. Prior to that, it was 95 to 100%. Um, there's also quite a few people that would put in for that that would hunt elsewhere and perhaps some that did not hunt in those limited areas for archery. Uh, for Honey District 401, the average number of archery hunters was about 93. This is really not that many hunters. Rather than uh, put in for a limited draw, keeping things simplified following the direction of reg simplification, uh, the, this proposal is to allow uh, general archery season on an elk license in Hunting District 401. It would not affect the general rice season at all. Uh, Hunting District 403 was incorporated into that because there were there in, in past there had been times when bull elk groups moved across that boundary, the interstate into 403, where it was a general season at the time. In, uh, most of those elk were harvested. That hasn't happened in quite some time. And so this proposal also is to remove Hunting District 403 from the general rifle tag or the special draw rifle tag, which is the 401-20. If there's any questions on that, I don't see any. I don't see any raised hands either, Corey. And so I see no questions. Do you want me to go on to 415? Sure. So Hunting District 415, this is another elk proposal. Part of our direction simplification, if there was adjoining districts that had 
different regulations, we should look at those and decide if they can be applied without negative biological impacts to our hunting district. Um, hunting district 415 is the Badger 2 Med, borders primarily region one on the west. That elk regulation is brow tine bull or endless elk on a general license. Hunting District 415 was either sex on a general elk license for the five weeks. This proposal is to move it to, similar to those other districts in Region 1, is um, brow tine bull or antlerless elk on a general license. That's all it is. Seeing no questions there. I'll move on. Uh, while we're on elk, we'll move down to hunting district 441. Ryan, and we had uh, some interest in that one. Somebody indicated they had some interest in that. So Yeah, I see that. And I'll be sure that I'll look for questions on that and try to do my best to explain it. Um, while we're on the of elk and brow tine bulls, there's a portion of hunting district 414 that is uh, elk hunting on a general license for either sex elk. Following um, the direction from reg simplification to look at making this honey districts that border each other similar, that portion of the honey district would become brow tine bull or antlerless elk on a general license. And that's the only proposal regarding elk in 441. For hunting district 441 for deer, I don't see any questions on 441 yet or any hands raised. Um, part of the direction from the director's office for rig simplification was to make hunting district boundaries the same across species. There are two portions of hunting district 441, one for elk and one for deer that have special requirements. This proposal would make Honey District 441 the same for deer and elk. If trying to look at the elk regulation, which would be the wilderness portion of 441 to the forest boundary, which is the um, deer boundary for the special permit, um, it would have negative connotations for elk. There's a lot of elk that live in that resident elk as well as migratory elk. And I would suspect there'd be quite a bit of over harvest if we allow general elk harvest on that area. So the only option is to look at the mule deer, moving that to from the forest boundary to the wilderness boundary. Um, deer are largely migratory in that area. And uh, there really wouldn't have a negative effect on that. There would be some loss of opportunity. This is really not a biological um, justification. It's more of trying to simplify the regulations. I have seen a lot of comments coming in that this is not a real popular proposal. Any questions on there? Seeing none, Corey, that is um, the sum of my proposed. Ryan, can you, can you see the questions? On I, there? I'm looking at that oh. now. Yeah, I can, Dave. Do you want to just answer those live or what would you like? Um, all I see is um, two questions there, Dave. Are there more? If you look at the open questions, there's, there's one of the uh, move the boundary. Uh, the amount of pressure is limited for the people who put in the effort to access that kind of country. Um, I think I addressed that question with, can I uh, address that question is again, this is a, a proposal to move that boundary following the direction to have boundaries the same. How many acres of public land would that close down from Scott? Um, there is, it really wouldn't close a lot on the north side, but there is a significant portion on the south side. I didn't calculate the exact acres. If I'd have thought this question was coming up, I could have done that. I did, I have looked at that. It would close down approximately 25 to 30% of that area. 
It would be um, Zach Vogel's question. It would be negative if you hunted there your whole life. That's more of a statement, not a question. And I can agree with you that it would change opportunity in that area. And I think those are both, um, Zach has some good ones that would be good as, as comments, so. <clears throat> I believe Zach has already commented. I've read some of those. Okay. But if he wants to comment again, that'd be great. If you have any other suggestions for that, Honey District would, glad to, would be glad to see them. Is that it, Ryan? Yes. Okay. Uh, who wants to go next? How about right down the list, 410. Sonia, you want to go next? Sonia, you're muted. Sonia, yeah, you're muted. Yeah, the mute button's not showing up next to Sonia's name, but I'm not hearing you. I can't hear either. How about can we jump to somebody else and Jake, you want to go? Sure. Can everyone hear me? Sounding good? Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm going to start with uh, the boundary changes. Um, start with the 413, 432 deer and elk hunting district boundary change, where the idea of combining hunting district 413 and 432 for deer and elk. Um, this wouldn't impact our, um, our, our, our survey information that we get. Um, uh, we could easily combine the harvest data um, it's more of a, a simplification um, than anything. Does anyone have any comments on that? I might cruise through and save some of the questions and comments for the end if that works for everyone. If not, feel free to chime in. Um, Corey, we can move to Hunting District 445. There's Two boundary change ideas for hunting district 445. The first one um, would impact the boundary between 445 and 421 and 423. Presently, that northwest boundary um, is half interstate and half the Missouri River. Um, to simplify the regulations, we're proposing to um, make, make that boundary all one geographic feature. In this case, we're um, gonna go with, we're considering going with Interstate 15. So the, if this change is supported and goes through the new 445, 421, 423 boundary would be Interstate 15. Um, basically we'll all the way to to Great Falls. Um, presently, north of Cascade, it's Interstate 15. South of Cascade, it's the Missouri River. Um, I'm going to talk about the Whitetail Prairie change next, Corey. Um, another, another idea um, is to make the Whitetail Prairie edition of the Beartooth WMA a part of hunting district 455. Presently, there's a, a 
a relatively small portion of the WMA that is in hunting district 445. The two hunting districts have different rate, different regulations. Um, um, in, to simplify the regulations, um, because of that effort, we're considering adding that whitetail prairie addition on the north end into 455 and extending the 455 hunting district regulations to that area. Um, we can switch to deer regulations in 445, Corey. I'm just testing. Can you guys hear me now? Um, mule deer in hunting district 445. Sonia, I can hear you. According to survey and harvest data are uh, significantly below the long-term average. So we're considering the idea of going to antlered buck only on the general license for mule deer. Um, say the same thing for hunting district fourth court. I don't know if it's worth flipping through all of those, but the, the same thing is going on in hunting district 413 and hunting district 447. In all three of those districts, which uh, represent the mountain foothill grassland habitat um, type in our deer management plan, um, mule deer are down. And uh, um, we're considering going to antler buck only to reduce doe harvest. This change would impact the new 413 if that idea goes through to combine 413 and 432. Um, in 413, we would keep some mule deer bee licenses around. Uh, we're thinking about 100 uh, to help address any game damage concerns that come up. Um, we would remove the mule deer bee licenses in 447 and 445. 447, there's 50 mule deer bee licenses available right now. And 445, we're at the bottom end of our quota. Um, and we've been issuing just five mule deer bee licenses. Uh, last things I have to talk about, I, I guess, Corey, if you want to save antelope for the the end, um, the last few things to mention are um, what we're doing in hunting district 447 and 445. Um, if the idea to dissolve the 900 permit bundle for archery um, uh, dissolves, um, we're considering uh, creating district specific archery only permits in 447 and also 455. Um, we've got hunter effort information um, to use to help us set um, district specific quotas and quota ranges in those two districts. Um, that's, that's essentially it. Um, I think the 447, 455 archery permit change is going to generate some comments. Um, and then uh, the, uh, the addition of the white or the white tail addition, adding the white tail prairie addition into 455 um, are, are two changes that folks um, uh, feel strongly about. So, did you want me to? Go over antelope quick, Corey. Or just... Jake, we had oh, yeah. we had a couple of questions on those. Um, sure. One that just said, uh, why would you take away a general tag area that's only open two weeks to begin with? And the other is, instead of going to antler buck only, would it be possible to make it doe harvest only on private? So to answer the first question, um, we probably would not have this idea. There wasn't this underlying effort to simplify the regulations. Um, presently in um, 
Um, or I lost my train of thought there. Um, presently, we have no way to limit the, the elk harvest that occurs in the Whitetail Prairie area, Whitetail Prairie Edition, by going to, uh, by adding that into Hunting District 455, we would have, excuse me, the light goes off. We would have uh, um, better control over harvest in the elk management unit, which includes 445 and 455. There we have objectives for managing older age class bulls. Does that answer the question? Looks like did, did that question disappear or is there another one, Dave? Sorry, I just ran over to switch on your light. Um, yep. Though the other question was why change Whitetail Prairie um, areas? Can you read those when you just look at the question? Yeah. yeah. I'm reading for you. Why change Whitetail Prairie with today's technology and Onyx maps? It's areas like that why people can be successful who put in the work and ride horses in 10 miles to be able to have a chance to kill elk that doesn't even affect the elk population in that district being mainly private government only. Um, It's going to help us enforcement issues. It's it's going to give us a little bit better way to manage the bull elk harvest. Um, we I completely recognize. I think everyone does that. It would be um, taking away opportunity to harvest a bull on the, the general license. Um, those first two weeks. Um, that is the trade-off with this proposed change, and we recognize that. Um, what I'm hearing from people have fallen in love with, with Whitetail Prairie. It's their, their place that they can get out to you and, and have that experience that they're hoping for. Um, this is a, a tough, tough idea to consider. Um, I, I recommend you write a thoughtful comment and submit it. Um, perhaps in both periods to, to share your thoughts. If we do get overwhelmingly negative comments, we would strongly consider removing the proposal um, after this comment period. Was the bull count in 455, 455, not 1500 bulls in a units that's mainly private and permit? Our, 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 Bull counts in our surveys have been down, likely attributed to difficulty observing them during the surveys. Um, there is no threshold for when we stop managing for older age glass bulls in that devil's kitchen area. Um, I've got the harvest data for Whitetail Prairie. Since 2015, we've harvested between eight and 29 bulls in the Whitetail Prairie edition. The average is about 16. 29 bulls was uh, kind of the outlier high number. Um, usually it's, it started off at eight, went down to seven, it was 18, 15, and then 19 last year. 2019 was when we had that spike at 29 bulls harvested. Um, what else we got here? That's it for questions on, on those. Uh, to those that had those questions, feel free to give me a call and visit more. Um, love to hear your thoughts. I know it is a, a tough one to swallow. Um, we're throwing it out there to see how people react. Um, your comment is important and will be considered. So thanks for hopping on and, and uh, hearing us out through this process here. We done with Jake, Corey? Yep. Who's up next? Don't you wanna try it again? Yeah, can you guys still hear me? 
Loud and clear. All right, good. Um, so yeah, we'll start with 410. Um, and that some of these changes, uh, especially with 410, might not make complete sense until we talk about 412 and 417. Um, but hopefully, if uh, later on you have time to read through this, it might make a little bit more sense. But um, I'll just do my best to breeze through 410 real quick, and then we can get to the other districts, which is why we're proposing to change 410. Um, so the first proposal is to eliminate the 410-01 archery only elk bee license. And the, the only reason for that is to reduce the number of license permit types in the regs and simplify the regulations. Um, there's no biological justification, um, no biological consequences, negative or positive um, from, for getting rid of or keeping that license. Average annual harvest on this license for the last 10 years was about 32 elk per year. So not very many elk, um, but it does represent the loss of opportunity for up to 300 people to um, archery hunt cow elk in 410. The only other ways that someone would be able to archery hunt cow elk in 410 would be if they had the either sex permit and then use their general license um, on a cow, or if they drew one of the 410 cow tags that's also valid during the rifle season. So those are some of the social considerations. Um, the other the other change for 410 is to remove 417 from the 410 21 either sex permit. So that permit would be valid in hunting district 410 only. And this is mainly due um, to the possibility of changing district boundaries in 417 to incorporate hunting district 412 and to also um, wrap hunting district 426, which is another breaks management unit into um, breaks elk archery. And the reason that we wanted to separate 412 from some of these other districts um, mainly has to do with, there's a lot more public land and block management in hunting district 410. And um, we're trying to manage for a bull cow ratio of 30 bulls per hundred cows. Um, granted, archery hunters aren't as successful as rifle hunters, but um, we still want to, um, we want to make, try to maintain that ratio and also reduce uh, potential overcrowding issues that would occur um, with having to raise the number of archery permits to accommodate hunting districts 412 and 426, if that makes sense. Um, and when I get through 412 and 426 and 417, we can um, talk about that more, but that's 410 uh, elk in a nutshell. Do you wanna to go to 412? Hey, St Steve LePage oh, question. Sorry, let me let me open that up. If that's on 410. Steve, can you hear us? Yeah, I'm just wondering why 410 and 417 weren't combined versus 412 and 530 or 411 and 530. Oh, why for why we're talking about moving 412 into 411, you mean? Right. No, 417 into 412. Oh, 417 into 412. Um, yeah, instead of 410, keep the brakes, the brakes, and the mountains, the mountains. Gotcha. Okay, so the one of the reasons why we proposed it the way we did um, is because I have I have evidence of elk in the Judas moving regularly into back and forth between our Mel's Creek and Hunting District 417, and sure. then we have we have elk in the moccasins regularly moving into the Judith River area of Hunting District 426. Yes, there is some movement um, of elk between 411 and 412, but I don't think it happens to the extent that elk are moving out of the Judiths into our Mills Creek. And so it was kind of an elk distribution issue um, was the main reason. So, so uh, I'm just, I'm naive. I don't know. No, you're... no, you're fine. Go ahead. Okay. All right. You think that the 417 and 410 have more transfer of elk than 411 and 412. I I think that 417 and 412 have more elk transfer of elk than 411 and 412. Okay. Does that make sense? But it's 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 what I think. You know, we don't really okay. have caller data to back it up. All right. Is that is that good? Oh, and then uh, I see another question. Will archery permit numbers stay the same since it has been talked of removing 417? I am not sure to that answer yet. I am getting, 
I'm getting a mix of, well, I haven't really gotten any comments seeking to keep them at 1900. I am getting comments saying you should decrease the number of permits. Um, I, I'm kind of like hoping that the public can help us inform what to decide and we'll think a little bit harder on that. As far as the number of hunters that draw the 410-21 elk permit, um, an average of about 1,340 choose to hunt 410 while about 140 um, hunt 417. So there's a big disparity in what and where people who draw that permit are choosing to go and it's not that much of a difference in people or it wouldn't be that um, many additional people in uh, 410, I think. So when you're only accounting for 417. Hey, Sonia, would it work? This is Corey. Would it go be work better if you did all your proposals and then, then go to questions or do them at the end, Dave? What do you think? Yeah, I oh, think yeah. We, sorry, I was just trying to stay on top of it. Yeah, I, can, I can definitely do that. Um, if, if you're putting something in the Q&A, Please refer to what hunting district or change that you're asking a question about, and then. And if, if, if you ask, then. if you asked a written question earlier, um, check back at Q and A because a lot of those have uh, uh, Ryan and Jake have been answering those, the ones that have been posed to them. So check back with those, and then as far as the uh, verbal questions, I think we'll hold off doing those until we get through all of the biologist proposals. Then we can, whatever time we have left, we can fill up with with just a open open microphone for verbal stuff that way that's okay i want to make sure we cover everything all of the uh, all of the districts with the right amount of time so go ahead sonia thanks all right well we're moving on to hunting district 412 next and this proposal it is um, mainly to simplify the regulations by reducing the number of hunting districts um it's a, it incorporates a boundary change in which there would be no more hunting district 412 the Judith Mountains portion of Hunting District 412 would become part of 417. The Moccasin Mountains portion would become part of 426. And then the portion of 412 that's south of Hanover Road on um, that little uh, boot toe kind of looking piece would go into 419. As a result, we would be eliminating the 412-20 either sex elk permit. Um, and then of course, uh, along with the region-wide proposal, 412 would not be part of the 920 permit. Um, so yeah, 412 has traditionally been considered part of the snow elk management unit. And I have gotten a few comments so far. Of, let's keep the, like, like you said, Steve, keep the mountains, the mountains. So please keep commenting if you feel that way. But the main reason I just divvied up 412, like I did was just given those elk movements and it was just kind of, um, it was the, it was like the neatest way to do that. Um, but Please comment if you have feelings on it. Um, and that's about all I have for 412. Oh, and um, those, the number of like, so for the rifle permits and archery permits, where like wherever those, those um, they would be compensated for, like with the brakes archery, and then um, it like 417 permits would probably raise, and then 426 permits would probably raise to accommodate for those displaced hunters, so. Um, we'll go ahead and go to 417. All right. Um, and again, with 417, um, similar to 410, eliminating the 41001 um, archery LP license. Um, generally, we, ha we have less than one elk harvested per year in 417 on that license. And also, um, you know, there's lots of opportunity for hunting a cow in 417 with either your 004 or a general. Um, so it's kind of, it's redundant and unnecessary, at least for Hunting District 417. Um, the boundary change I referenced earlier um, with the Judith Mountains, but additionally, there's another portion of Hunting District 426 that's uh, west of Stafford Ferry Road. Um, instead of Stafford Ferry Road being the boundary, we would move that um, to the PN Bridge Road. Um, and it would kind of, there's a, there's a small group of elk that tends to move back and forth from Dog Creek into 417 a little bit. Um, and just kind of the makeup of like the public land and those breaks, it, it just seemed to kind of make sense to me to um, adjust that boundary. But again, if you have feelings about it, positive or negative, please comment. Um, like I mentioned before, removing Hunting District 417 from the 410 either sex archery permit and then create a new 417-21 either sex archery permit 
that's valid in both hunting districts 417 and 426. Um, and I just threw the number of 400 out there, and that was based on um, out of all the people that draw the 900-20s and all the people that draw the um, 41021s. That's how many people opted to hunt either hunting district um, 417, 412, or 426 average. So I thought by making the quota that way, um, it would it would the the draw odds would be pretty good for folks. Um, we wouldn't be really limiting people, but. Again, that's that's a suggestion at this point. Um, I think I got that covered. Um, where are we going next? 426. Um, mentioned it before, or kind of alluded to it before, removing hunting district 426 from the 900-20. 426 is actually considered part of the Missouri River Breaks elk management unit. It has been historically managed and tied in with the snowies, um, but we're bringing it back to the breaks um, and keeping it consistent that way. I mentioned that archery permit valid in 417 and 426 there. And then of course the boundary change where um, 417 would absorb the moccasin mountains. I mean, 426 would absorb the moccasin mountains and then it would lose uh, that portion north of PN Bridge Road. Um, so that's uh, 426. I think we can go to the snowies now or 411 now. So you had one question maybe we could answer. Just, it just said, um, this might be a simple one to answer right now. It just said, do you know what the rifle permit numbers would be in 426 and 417 after eliminating 412? I don't know yet. Um, I haven't. Um, I haven't, I haven't really put much thought into the actual, like what number that would be. Um, we'll probably be looking, we'll, we'll be looking at hunter numbers, harvest data, um, survey data, and try to throw out a number um, at some point. Well, obviously during um, the season setting process, but I have not decided at this point what to make that um, quota. So. Um. All right, moving on to 411. Um, again, removing 411 from the 900-20 either sex archery permit, we would create a new archery permit that's valid for the entire Snowy's complex. Um, so that would be what was form what, well 411 and then what was formerly 511 and 530 proposed to be a new hunting district 535. We'd have the quota, we'd set the quota initially at 1100. Um, again, looking at uh, hunter effort data and participation. That's how many people with a 900-20 or about how many people with a 900-20 opt to hunt the snowies, um, the, the snow, just the snowy mountains, um, 411, 511, and 530. So we felt putting the quota there would, um, would be a good starting point. Um, increase the quota on the rifle permit uh, to, from 300 to 400. And then um, for the general license, the 004 and the 411-0, Four eleven zero zero. We kind of want to make this, the seasons and the shoulder seasons across the whole snowies consistent and the same. Um, and so that's adding an antlerless only early shoulder season that's valid only on private land, and then extend the late shoulder season to February fifteenth. Um, for the general license and the zero zero four, it would not be valid on Forest Service. Um, for the four eleven, we do not have that not valid on Forest Service language. I don't really think that's a big deal because during the late shoulder season, for the most part, we don't have elk on the forest service. Um, and then for that 411.00, increase the quota to 1200 um, to provide ample opportunity for uh, private landowners and hunters to get after cow elk. And then to remove any separation or split in management um, of 411. So with the last commission meeting, um, they kind of restricted the shoulder season on the west side of 411. And um, we don't feel that that's necessary. So we're gonna propose to remove it. Um, and so those are, the, those are the proposals for my elk districts. Um, deer, there's not much being proposed um, of, as changing. Obviously the 412 uh, mule deer B license would be going away. For 426, we've been getting a number of game damage complaints. And so we're gonna, proposed to increase the quota and the quota range on that deer B license to accommodate for not only those complaints, but also the, um, the moccasins and the same with 417, so. 
with that, if there's, let me go see the question box. There's a couple of questions. Um, yeah, um, I can pull up, I think the, yeah, so the current bull cow ratio in 410, let me pull that up real quick. It'll just take me a second. Um, and also again, whatever we don't get through here, right. we can try and type up or- um, So our last survey of hunting district 410 was in uh, February, 2020. And then we had a ratio of 50 bulls per 100 cows. So right now it's a really healthy bull ratio. So, um, and then was accessible public land taken into consideration when establishing that quota of 1100 archery permits for the snow is complex. Um, Jess, I would say yes, because um, we, you know, we didn't, we kind of, we, we kind of took what we're currently, the current amount of pressure we're getting and also into consideration the number of people that um, are not happy that they did not draw the 900-20 and um, and can't hunt the snowies this year. Um, as far, I would be reluctant to raise that any higher because of the um, public land issues and access issues and crowding on public land that's occurring in the snowies. That being said, if we have people thinking that a quota of 1100 is too high, um, we would, yeah, we would definitely consider lowering it. Um, and then Justin D, any thoughts of cutting a few weeks back on the buck harvest dates and the breaks to reduce taking a lot of vulnerable deer during the rut? Um, I have not, I have not thought of, or I've not really considered that that much. If that's an idea that you would like to see um, um, spoken to, definitely please comment on that. Um, yeah. Sonia, I think that one also ties in sort of directly into the general, the statewide proposals. Right. Right. opening and closing dates for the season. Yeah. Well, there's been discussion. Some people love hunting over Thanksgiving. Some people think that's too late you know, right. to be able to hunt. So that would be a good one to comment on, especially on the statewide, as well as if you if you want to comment specifically on 410, make a comment about it there. All right, I think I'm Sonia? done unless. Okay. Uh, Jay, you want to go? I don't have nearly as much compared to Sonia, but um, similar to the other proposals that you've heard, we do have one, one uh, additional proposal in the Little Belts to combine two adjacent deer and elk, deer and elk hunting districts, um, 416 and 454. That'd be on the southwest end of the Little Belts. Yep, uh, those districts are in the same EMU. They've been managed identically for many years um, and we wouldn't lose any uh, resolution with our survey or harvest data if we combine them. So that's a, that's a proposal. Um, and the only other one, uh, and it's, it appears as a series of individual proposals, but what we're uh, thinking about doing is converting uh, all the region four elk hunting districts in the Little Belts and in the castles to uh, from an any elk or an either sex um, regulation to a broad time bull antlerless regulation. And again, this is to primarily to make those districts regulations consistent with the adjacent big belts and region three hunting districts. And, you know, one of the um, side effects of that would be you'd recruit uh, 50 or 60 uh, branch antler bulls into the population each year. That's basically a spike harvest now. And until we get to antelope, that's all I have. You want, do you want to do antelope quick, Jade, or does it matter? Oh, that'd be great. We can get through it. Um, we have two proposals in my area. Um, we, uh, a couple cycles ago, we uh, made the Antelope 491 boundary uh, consistent with the regional boundary, which eliminated a large portion of that hunting district. And now we're just proposing to combine 490 and 491 together into a single Antelope district. It just makes geographic sense. That quota would equal the standing quota 
the combined standing quota in both those districts. And similarly, uh, we're, we're considering combining antelope districts 413 and 430. That's on the north um, side of the Little Belts into a single antelope hunting district. And the, the same thing there, the quota, the new quota would equal the combined um, existing uh, quota for those two uh, antelope hunting districts. Okay, um, who's left, Brent? Yep. Can you hear me? Gotcha. Yeah, we can start. There's a couple, couple boundary changes. One area we're combining or proposing to combine some hunting districts and then some modifications to mule deer seasons. Those are the, the primary changes. So. For those looking at a computer, as Corey just brought up for hunting district 421 and 423, I'll start there and work my way north. Um, that's looking at combining current, the, the idea of combining two hunting districts um, as they currently are 421 and 423. <laughs> They're currently managed as the bird tail management unit um, together. Jake already spoke to the, 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 the fairly minor boundary, at least I view it as a fairly minor boundary change on the south there going from the Missouri River to the interstate for a stretch <coughs> south end of the bird tails <coughs> that, that, that cuts between 421 and 445. So for uh, combining those hunting districts, um, if, if we went that direction currently, we would currently 421 is neither sex, general rifle or a general season, archery and rifle. And that would, the way we drafted it up, 423, if we combine those together, would also become an either sex area. Currently, 423 is actually brow time bow or antler this only season. So <clears throat> I know there's a little bit of concern there that I've heard from, from folks by going that direction. Kind of the opposite of from what, what uh, Jay was talking about for little belts, this is just for consistency in the, in the either sex season types that are, that are in this area, um, especially to the north in 422 and 444, where those are both either sex elk season. So that um, with that, Adding that in there, 423, basically we would expect a handful of, of branch antler bulls or spikes to be harvested within that hunting district. Not to the point, um, I don't think, um, being a biological detriment to the bulls and bull cow ratio. So but there certainly would be some, the potential for some added spike harvest in 423 that hasn't been there. So um, that's for elk, for, for deer. Given the, the combining or the proposed combining of those hunting districts, it's currently an either sex season for both of those areas. The only minor part, the very extreme western part of 423, where there is a little bit of national forest, it's a, a buck only area and those forest uh, and the forest ground that is there, we would do away with that and just make the whole area in either sex, um, either sex, either species. For, for deer in that area. Um, there's no questions on that. We can just keep poking our way north. Um, stick with, uh, go 422, yeah, that one, deer and elk. 422, 444, deer and elk. <coughs> Same thing here, um, or similar, we're looking to move that boundary there's that gray line that if folks can see that that's the current east boundary of 422 the west boundary of hunting district 444 that Corey's pointing out 
shifting that boundary to the east for 422 and making highway 287 the boundary and this is <clears throat> as much as anything this is for um, consistency in elk management there's elk that do bleed over that current boundary um, and so by default we we throw the like as, as one big example for hunting district 444 is a shoulder season <laughs> Only, only because some elk lead over that direction during the winter period. So um, that's the main change there. Um, deer, it would, would throw a portion of, of uh, 444 into, uh, yep, into the Prairie Mountain fo foothill habitat type related to, to deer management when we're looking at how we manage deer and our adaptive management plan. Um, but that in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to affect anything. It's still going to be either sex area. Um, the biggest change there, <clears throat> Cora, if you want to jump to the deer season, since we're on that subject, is uh, up, up uh, keep going up, 422, 24, 25, 42 deer. Yep. <laughs> the biggest change there with those four hunting districts is currently two of those districts are, are uh, buck only, and two of them are either sex with buck only on the national forest. Um, and what we're looking to at least propose to change is make the entirety of those four hunting districts either sex, either species for mule deer. Um, and this is based on biological parameters that we focus on related to deer management demographic data, data and harvest data. Certainly that will mean there will be some does, uh, probably the biggest concern, and, and it's a legitimate concern from some folks, is that there's the potential for deer harvest, doe harvest on national forest, which hasn't been the case um, you know, for quite some time. The harvest will be minimal because it's on your general tag, um, but certainly there will be some of that impact or some of that harvest anyway. See, there is a question. Oh, it's a for your question. Um, and I think really the last change is related to 442, 450 deer and elk. <clears throat> this is primarily an elk change. Um, but those, there's a couple or a few proposals in here that are, that are kind of tied together. They're written up as different proposals um, based on how we did it, but they're tied together. 450 currently, Hunting District 450 currently is at least during the uh, archery season because there's five limited rifle permits in there for, the, uh, for bull elk or either sex licenses for elk. By default, that area is also a 900-20 area for archery, limited archery. Um, what we are looking to do is, is remove that based on the, the numbers of elk to include very strong bull numbers in that area, remove that those limited five permits and make it a brow tine bull slash antlerless only area for both, that would be for, for archery and rifle seasons. By doing that, the 920 would go away. It would just be a general archery area. And then the other change in combination with that is shifting that boundary, the current east boundary of 442 or the west boundary of 450, shifting it to the national forest. So I have seen some comments um, related to some concern related, um, related to that change but honestly it's not going to change elk management it's actually going to liberalize the elk hunting within 450 and it's going to maintain the same elk um, hunting opportunity that, that's currently in 442 that that portion of 442 that would go away and become 450 if that makes sense that might be a little confusing so um, and then that area would also become an either sex either species mule deer. Um, it's currently 450 currently is either sex, either species for, for deer as a whole. Um, so that would be, we maintain that and, and the likelihood of adding 50, that's one of the proposals of adding 50 um, mule deer doe licenses that would be mainly targeting deer further east 
in that hunting, hunting district where deer numbers are doing quite well. And 444, we're also looking to add 50 um, doe licenses within that hunting district, um, which is further just to the east where, again, deer numbers based on harvest data and survey data we have, um, it's showing that deer numbers are coming back fairly well, mule deer numbers in that hunting district, so. Um, and I think that's it for deer and elk for me. So there is one question, 441 and 442. I'll just read it. Another question regarding areas 441-442, will surrounding areas of 441, such as area 442 have a negative impact on deer when hunter harvest goes up, when hunting pressure is increased due to lack of opportunity in area 441, <clears throat> especially allowing for harvest on a general tag. Certainly that could be um, an impact whenever we limit harvest, that's whenever we limit harvest in any areas, when we go to limited buck hunting um, anywhere in the state, one of the things we consider is, is where are those hunters gonna go? Um, you know, how much impact will there be on adjacent hunting districts? Um, 442, with that area being not a difficult, it's more, it's, it's somewhat of a backcountry area for deer hunting, but not totally. Um, I don't see, and then, and then change, the boundary change within 450 and 442, I don't see a large impact there where you're gonna have an, uh, a, a significant increase in, in buck harvest um, based on access and, and um, where we see the, the bulk of those deer um, within 442 uh, at least. So where a lot of those deer tend to hang, there's some large landowners that, that access can be limited at times. Um, there is opportunity in places there, but by default, some of that access is limited to begin with. Uh, obviously the national forest is wide open. Um, but it's not an area that's easy to get into and hunt. So unless Ryan has something else to add to that, I don't, I don't see a, a big concern on that from our end. It's something that we would obviously be tracking though too, if we did make any of those changes. I really don't have much to add to that, Brent. Uh, I was just getting ready to look up the harvest um, mule deer buck harvest in 441, and that's generally less than 100 bucks. And uh, don't think that there would be a big change in uh, a dramatic increase in harvest in surrounding areas. There's one more question, and I'm I'm not sure what if it's a comment or a question, Scott. You might need to rephrase that. Well, we can move on and if Scott wants, I can follow up with that, um, type an answer for that if I need to, if he um, clarifies. Okay, Dave, I think that's it. Okay, so we're through all the general proposals we have. 28 minutes, almost a half hour left. So start, I guess, let's we'll start if there's any, any, everybody wants to circle back into any of these proposals that we've already talked about or have some more specific questions. Jake is on typing a, a question right now. And Scott, thanks. We see your, your, um, your question to Brent or Ryan wants to take a look at that one. But we can go back and do any more of the questions or do, uh, general questions, or if we don't have any more of those, we can wrap things up. Hey, Dave, there's one question in there from Cole on, I, I suspect, the whitetail prairie thing. Um, I don't and know if we've answered that. Typing, 
it shows Jake's typing an answer on that one right now, and then he can uh, he can come back on and address that. Okay. Looks like he did. To answer Scott's question, in County District 441, there is no doe harvest, mule deer doe harvest on a general license. It's um, a drawing with 50 licenses and an average of about 15 to 20 deer or mule deer does are harvested a year. So Corey, you see we have, and maybe let's, um, should we just open these up to verbal questions? That might be easier for people than trying to, to type back and forth. Yeah, let's, let's do that, Dave, we got time. Yeah, we have a little bit of time. So if there's if there's uh, specific questions, we can start either with Scott or with uh, Doug. Scott was asking about doe harvest on the general tag. And I think that one was answered. We got that one. OK, I think so. Pull that one off. And so, Doug, um, and Doug, if you want to if you want to talk, raise your hand up and we can unmute you. We can do that for not for the rest of these. We might as well, since we have the time, we could just let people talk. And and Doug is up there, so let's. Doug, can you talk? Okay. Unmute yourself, and there we go. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah, I uh, I actually like a lot of the recent proposals. I think a change is necessary, and I I feel like this is moving in a really good direction. You know, mostly to eliminate crowding in a lot of these districts. And I appreciate Sonia for what she's done. My worry is 920 was 20 some odd districts and several of them turned into limited permit types. And we've eliminated those permit types on the fringes. We eliminated like the Northern 400s, we eliminated the 700s and part of item or areas near uh, like 590, the Bull Mountains. And that we've left a few different permit types with a limited number of permits in a few of these districts. And I, my worry is that uh, dedicated archery hunters, well, living in 700 or up on the front will apply for these to have them in their pocket and they may hunt them, they may not, they may hunt them exclusively. Meanwhile, a lot of locals in the central Montana area will have a difficult time drawing permits in their backyard. And that's a concern for me. I, I can try to, I, since I think you're talking, you know, I, I can try to answer that. Um, so um, one of the questions in the statewide, um, in the statewide section actually does um, pertain to that a little bit. Um, it's if you draw an, a below permit, uh, you can only hunt your district and how they're, um, we're currently trying to gauge how people feel about that. And so that might address some of what you're concerned about. Um, as far as um, people, like say people, the snowies being removed from the 920 and people wanting to hunt the snowies, we came up with that quota for the snowies archery permit based on how many people drew the 920 that, you know, 3,700 to 4,000 people, around 1,100 of them, I think it was a little less than 1,100 of them, um, we rounded up chose to hunt the snowies. And so we're guessing that that's how, that's roughly how many people would apply to hunt the snowies. Um, and that's kind of where we're starting from. So I hope that answers some of your questions. Yeah, and Doug, this is Corey. I don't know if you noticed that like region seven there and these other regions five as well, they're creating some of their own archery draw districts out of that bundle as well. Thank you. And I, and I do see that. Like, I don't yeah. know if I'm still unmuted, but my worry is, and, and so back to Sonia's initial response, whereas it's like a mule deer permit, I feel like you could find some support among the sportsman's community for something like that. Um, the areas without the permits, I worry about them just sticking a permit in their pocket and then cutting the locals short. So I'm not trying to be selfish. I'm just trying to look out for people in this area. But thank you very much. I think you guys answered my question. One thing I want to point out, um, people are starting to kind of drop off as we wrap up. We're recording this. So within um, a day or two or so, the uh, the recording for this should be on our webpage. 
if you just go back and look for the Zoom meeting on that main page, I kept showing everybody over and over again with the elk on the top. You can also re check out the other regional meetings as, as they finish theirs up over the next week or so. So we've got through Doug. There was a written question that kind of came next. And then uh, we had a couple more, Mike Mershon and Stephen LePage. Um, we'll go through those. But first we had Jess that just said, is there any talk of going to mandatory harvest reporting? Hey, Jay, you want to take a stab at this since you're on the harvest survey working group? Any, anything on the way? I, I don't have any great insights. I mean, there has been talk about the uh, electronic tag validation, which would essentially be uh, harvest reporting, but that's that's technologically that's a ways out. But no, I haven't heard anything that makes me think they're going mandatory anytime soon. That would be a good statewide comment, though, if that's something you'd like to see. I didn't catch the name on that one. It was Jess. Another comment on that is uh, currently you can report your own harvest on the IFWP website. I know some of the commissioners have talked about this um, in their previous uh, commission meetings. Nothing's been decided. Um, um, I don't think anything currently is being proposed. So if you have a comment like that, uh, submit it. Our next one, I'm gonna turn on the microphone for Mike Mershon. And Mike, if you wanna unmute yourself and uh, go ahead with your question. Hey there guys, <clears throat> thanks for the opportunity here. I jumped on uh, just a smidge late, but um, I, I wanted to get a little bit of clarification. Um, kind of touching on what the last gentleman talked about too. Um, so if if we move to like the the mule deer um, permit system where uh, you know you can only hunt the the unit that you draw uh, regarding the archery only permit. So if you were to draw an archery only permit, would that you know, and you can only hunt that unit, would that affect the general season rifle? units uh you know later in the year currently we can you know if you don't you're not successful during archery you can then hunt with a rifle later in the year how would that how would that play out do we do we know yet or you want to answer that yeah, yeah let me um statewide proposal hey mike i'll i went through that one as a statewide proposal i'm going to try to share my screen again um let's see here can you see that? Mm, I, not yet, no. Oh well, no. There we go, we got you now. You're okay. okay, so the statewide proposal that the director's office is trying to get input on, ask that question. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna make this bigger here. So there's a note, you can see that where it talks about limited archery permits. They could only hunt bull elk in that district during the archery season, but would be allowed to hunt bull elk during the general rifle season in any general hunting district. So I think that answers your question, but if you yeah. see that happen, I would definitely make a comment. If you agree with that statement, there may be some people that say you shouldn't get to hunt both. Um, there are probably be comments on both sides of the fence, but if you feel one way or the other, that's the way he has written it right now. He or the director's office, I, I should say. And right. that, that is under the statewide proposals, if you wanted to read that. Perfect. 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 Yeah, that, that answers my question. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Corey, isn't that the way it is right now? If you, if you draw the limited archery, you still can jump, uh, yep. hunt rifle season and in general. So there wouldn't be a change in that unless there was a proposal to change it. Right, right. But there could be a proposal that comes that says if you draw a general or draw a limited entry bull elk permit, you don't hunt anywhere but that hunting district. So there'll probably be folks that comment on both sides. And that would be similar to what the mule deer permits, the right permits are right now, or have been for a while. So we had another question, it was uh, directed to Brent. You see that one, Brent, from Scott about doe harvest?
Yeah, um, I'll just read it. So my question, uh, allowing doe harvest on a general permit, a general license with the increased pressure in, in hunting district or increased pressure with the increased pressure in area 442 due to lack of opportunity in area 441, is that a concern for deer population? Especially around Deep Creek. Um, I, no, I don't think so. Honestly, from my perspective, if there's a place that we would be great to have some doe harvest, it would be in Deep Creek. Um, there, is, there is very minimal doe harvest occurring in, in that area currently. I mean, the, the, the forest is a buck on the area and everything off is in either sex, either species season currently. And so even if, if it limits it to the north, I don't see a shift in, in significant harvest to the south, um, especially on does, even in bucks in general. There's, um, and part of that is just, is there's certainly access in deep, in deep Creek, but not to the point where it's gonna at least my sense to, to have a, a biological, significant biological impact on, on deer in that area. For that part of the, just for perspective, that area from, oh, well, just south of Ear Mountain down to Sun River, it sounds like you're familiar with some of that country. That's where some of the strongest densities of deer are um, along the front and in, in that smaller area and some of the best buck doe ratios that we consistently see. And that's a lot of that's just tied to limited access. So certainly the deep creek access has opened up the opportunity to increase harvest uh, across the board for all, for both antlerless deer and um, antlerless mule deer and bucks, but not to the point of, of seeing that shift. I don't think if that were to go through um, on the north side up there in 441. So Hopefully that helps, but I'm happy to visit more um, if you want to down the road. Any other questions? We don't have anything up right now, either written or anybody with a hand up that uh, is interested in asking a question. Anybody else have anything? Anybody out there? There's a 441 came on. Oh, we just came up. Yep. 441, is that Ryan? I'll read that question. It's from Cody. The question is regarding to 441 mule deer. Would permit numbers change at all? Uh, we would have to look at that and see what was be tolerated. The current level of 35 permits in Honey District 441 for that latter part of the season is um, has reduced uh, 100 complaints about a lack of access. So there is adequate access for about those 35 permits right now. Uh, don't get very many complaints at all. Also with the Boone and Crocklet, a public access area not currently taking reservations for Mulder, even if you have the permit, with this access gone, have you thought about other access points? I look at access points along 441 all the time and have talked to several landowners trying to gain access. And uh, that's a very difficult situation there. Uh, to know that I doubt that you would see any change in access. It would be a cause for concern with, with recently with the, the Boone and Crockett closing that. We'd have to give some serious thought about the permit levels because they used to take five, five of those permits um, throughout the season. If you have a suggestion for permit numbers, go up and down as is or if you would like to see what permit numbers would change or have a suggestion for that, please do write that in the comments. And another question from Cody. Okay, so if the access is gone, why would closing the forest be closed to even a general tag it's limiting it even more. Again, this is um, not necessarily about access or limit. It's uh, following the direction given to us to make the deer and elk hunting district boundaries the same. I've seen a lot of comments on this and uh, I don't think that it, uh, 
it's not a strong possibility right now. I think this is going to happen. So. Any others or just verbal questions, general questions? Scott's got his hand up. Scott, do you want to go ahead and unmute yourself? Still muted, Scott. Scott, we're not hearing you if you're trying to talk. If you got the same view we do, Scott, on the bottom left is the mute button. It's a microphone. She looks like Scott's gone. So anybody else, last chance to ask a question. If it's the same Scott that was asking about mule deer, um, Scott, if, if you can hear me and you want to. I think he's gone. He's off the, uh, he's off the list. Oh, he's gone, gone. Okay. Yep. Well, if we don't have any more questions, um... Yeah, just Doug asking. Uh, I don't think we had nobody had a follow up question for Doug or a return question, did they? For Doug Krings. Dave, I got a quick. Um, Cole D was asked a question I wasn't prepared to answer, and I just did some quick math, Cole, and it looks like the bull harvest on Whitetail Prairie makes up about. 11% of the bull harvest across the elk management unit. Um, to, to, to me, 11% uh, off of a, a small property um, seems significant, but um, I know people feel differently about that. So thought I'd share, I'm still open to visiting with you if you wanted to reach out to me after this meeting. And that goes for anybody who's still on or who was on, especially if you're viewing this um, in the next few weeks after this is October 7th. So if you're looking at this in a week, it's still valid. That information is still there to, um, to get a hold of the biologists, either with their contact information on that sheet we showed at the beginning on the FWP webpage. Uh, you can always call the regional office here in Region 4 in Great Falls and and get the contact information, or you can go right onto the website, hit a button and ask them a question. And uh, But please remember the important thing here we're really trying to get is to have people um, make their comments now. And then when these tentative regulations, when all this gets formed up into tentative regulations and submitted out by the commission, that'll be the next opportunity to uh, for you to comment. Again, that'll be mid-December mid to mid-January on the actual regulation proposals. So there's a long process um, ahead of us and there's a, a lot that can happen with these in between now and that time. We basically, between 2022, we have a couple of months to go in this. So use the opportunity, ask questions, follow up and, uh, and make your comments. But otherwise, I guess if nobody else has their hands up, we appreciate everybody coming on and having an interest in doing this on a Thursday night in October when people would be probably getting ready to go bird hunting or antelope hunting this weekend. So good luck if you're doing that.
And anybody else on the panel have anything they want to add? Just thank everybody for uh, joining us. Thanks to the biologist. Um, uh, great opportunity to uh, present that information to the public uh, firsthand. And um, have a good weekend. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Everybody, I'm going to shut That's things off. Appreciate it. I think Andy's on too. He can help us shut down, and we're good to go. Just thank you too for the comment for for sticking through this the whole night. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody.